Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to run the medieval city building game called Manor Lords on the Apple Silicon Mac. So Manor Lords has no macOS port, I'm afraid, but we can actually run the Windows version of the game on the Mac using a piece of software called Crossover, which translates Windows games into playable macOS titles. So in this video today, I'm going to show you the full process of how to get this running. So we're going to be installing Crossover. We're going to be setting up with D3D Metal and M-Sync to get the best performance out of the Apple Silicon Mac. So the first thing that we are going to do is download Crossover 24. So make sure to scroll down and then click on the link at the top of the description. Every single purchase that's made through this link helps to support this channel and the content that I create. So click on the link at the top of the description here and you'll be taken to the Codebooters website. And in this promo code box, make sure to use the code AppleGamingWikiNew and you'll get a huge 20% discount off your purchase. But if you're not quite ready to commit to a full purchase of Crossover, then make sure to go back to the homepage and then scroll down and you can make use of a full fully featured 14 day free trial here. Just press the try now button and then scroll down and then enter your name and email address. And I'm gonna press the download trial now button to make use of this trial. So once you have made a purchase, then go and log into your Codeweaver's account and then go to the downloads button here and then make sure to download the latest version of Crossover. So once that's finished downloading, we're gonna to go to our finder button here and then go to downloads. And then we have our Crossover 24.0.0 zip, which is the latest at the time of recording, double click. And then it's gonna go ahead and extract into downloads. We're gonna drag and drop this into our applications folder here. So just drag and drop. And then within our applications folder, we're going to find Crossover and then double click. And it's saying here, Crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Press open. So now that Crossover is open, we're going to go ahead and install the most popular Windows game launcher, which is Steam. So I'm going to press this install button on the bottom left. And I'm going to type in the word Steam. And we're going to click on the Steam button here. And this is basically a Steam installer wizard. We're going to press the install button here. And it's going to go ahead and automate all of the processes that we need for Steam to install, including building what's called a bottle and then downloading any dependencies that it needs. So here it's saying creating Steam Bottle, installing fonts. Here, if anything pops up, just press yes. And a lot of this just happens in the background. So now we have the Windows Steam installer opened up here. We're going to go through the Windows installation process. Just press yes to English. We're going to install it within the default location within the bottle and then press next. And what I normally advise people to do is not to click run Steam. I'm going to press the finish button here so that the entire bottle can finish creating. So this means that this bottle entry has now been listed here. So at this stage, I would advise changing some settings. It depends on the game that you you're going to be running as well. So D3D Metal, for example, which comes from Apple's game porting toolkit, allows you to run DirectX 11 and 12 games on the Mac. If you want to turn this on, most games are going to benefit from this. Or alternatively, we have DXVK, which is the older method for running DirectX 11 games. Some games work better through this, for example, Overwatch 2. So you might want to toggle this on instead. So you can only toggle one or the other. And if you have neither of these turned on and you're trying to run a DirectX 11 or 12 game, then that's going to run through Wine D3D. Also as well, we have the option of eSync or M-Sync. I will turn on M-Sync, which is compatible for most games and it's going to increase performance as well. So just click on this reboot bottle and enable msync. So we're basically ready to open up Steam. So just double click on the Steam icon here and it's saying here it's downloading an update. So that's the Windows version of Steam updating itself. So now the Steam login window has opened up. So if you don't have a Steam account already, you can go ahead and create one for free here or you can log in or use your smartphone to scan this QR code. So I'm going to be scanning with my phone here and it's going to go ahead and log in for us. And now we've basically logged into the Windows version of Steam instead of the Mac version. And now we can now run many of these Windows games on the Mac. So within the store page on Steam, we're going to download the Windows version of Manor Lords. So we need to go ahead and make a purchase of this game. So this is the Steam page for Manor Lords. What we're going to do is put this into our cart and then we're going to go ahead and make a purchase. So once we made our purchase, we can install the content here or we can go to the library and then within the search, we're going to type in Manor Lords and then we're going to click on this and then click install. So just put this in its default location and then click install. So this has started downloading. You can see here, this is only five gigabytes in size. So just wait for that to finish before we can move on to the next step. So once this is finished downloading, what we're going to do is go to library and then go to Manor Lords and then we're going to go ahead and launch this. So just so that you remember, we're running this through Steam using D3D Metal and M-Sync as well. So we're going to go ahead and launch the game. Here it's saying that Visual C++ runtime needs to be installed. Press yes to install. Here we're just going to go ahead and install these prerequisites. Set up successful, press close. So now the game has launched. So it's saying here the game is still in development. So press continue here. Just be aware that this might be a little bit buggy. So I'm just going to go ahead and tweak some of these settings. So this is running about 40 to 50 FPS. And what I'm going to do is actually change the graphics settings. I'm going to tweak this down to high so that we can get a little bit more frame rate. And now on the map level here, we're getting about 70 FPS. In the actual game here, this is about 40 to 50 FPS. So still playable still works. So anyway, as you can see, Man of Lords does run pretty well on the Apple Silicon Mac. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.